Hoi there, it's Rain Hat. Welcome to the first day of class. If you've been here before, or know what you're doing, you might find a few unfortunates in the comments section with questions. Feel free to bully them. Uh, I, I mean, bully them. I mean, um, feel free to help them, because helping people is what we do best. Settle down now, class. It's time for the intro sequence. How to make a body in Blender The thing about topology is, there's no right way to do it. Well, that's what a stupid, dummy idiot would say. Of course there's a right way to do it. Which is what? The way I do, of course. You must first know the way of the quad. Engons are for ninnies. They give you lighting errors, or even break parts of your model when you try to bring it into unity. Try should be used sparingly because they are not the easiest to work with early on in the modelling phase. Tries can be useful though, for reducing topology and collapsing joints. Sometimes you need a try here and there. I always start my models strictly using quads only. It's a good practice. I also try to keep stuff low poly and add a subdivision modifier for easy smoothing. Let's take a look at this in practice. Welcome to Blender! This is round two of recording, because the first time I didn't like it for some reason. But let's go ahead. We have this Blender splash screen that is in front of us. It looks quite nice, but we don't want anything to do with it, so we can just click off. Usually when you open Blender, it shows you a new file in the background, so you usually don't have to click anything. Let's start with deleting the default cube. I'm just kidding, we never delete the default cube. We delete the camera and we delete the light because we don't need to work in that way. This default cube is 2 by 2 meters. We will get it right this time around. If you are skeptical of the size of your cube, then we can just add a new one. Add mesh cube. Open this little menu. We can change the size let's say we want a one by one meter and we want it at zero zero and let's put it at two we have a uh, one meter cube above the default cube let's not um do anything rash and put that at zero zero zero. <laughs> if this is a meter, then all those little cubes inside has to be ten centimeters, of course. When you're grabbing things, uh, you might have a left click select or a right click select. I have a right click select because I specifically set it to that. If you do not, then if you want to select a shape, you will be clicking left. And it will light up, but since I am clicking right, it lights up. That's my select key on my mouse. With this cube, what are we going to do with it? Let's turn it into a model. For those of you that didn't watch the introductory video, there will be a reference sheet in the description, but also in the introductory video. We want to grab that from our file explorer and just drag and drop it into the scene. If you're a Patreon, you might get an even better, even better reference to work with. But for now, we'll just have these. We'll just set the Y to 0 for now, X to 0 for now. Let's rename this to, double clicking to rename, ref front. We want to go to these object data properties little photo looking red button we'll set these both to front 
and you know what let's click only access aligned as well what that does is it disappears when you uh, rotate so it doesn't get in the way we'll also turn on opacity and put that to 0.3 and we'll just clicking the X button there, but you can also numpad one, numpad three, just quick quick shortcut to go to the side, GY. Put the bag about here, which would be more than enough. We want to George hand to be about a meter tall, just because she's small, so let's do that. We're going to use this as a reference, these squares in the back. And that should about do it. It's a little... Alright, I'm fine with that. Because I'm very nice to you, I have these guidelines on the reference, so make sure to zoom in. Make sure to select whatever it is you want to grab with your select click, mine's right. Press G so you can grab it. And we're going to lock it on the X axis, so immediately press X after. Let's do that again. It's selected, or you know, click off, select it, G, and then X will lock it in the X axis. I'm going to line that up with the blue line, and we're going to bring this down. Let's hide the cube for a moment, just press the I. G, it's at. And that seems good to me. These are more or less on the bottom. Now oh, let's do this. This is a little bit below, but it's fine. It just means the reference wasn't done perfectly one-to-one. -one. Right. Let's put the cube. Actually, let's not do that quite yet. We have this. Why can't I select it? Right. Select it with whatever click. Shift D. Going to first snap it on the Y axis so we can bring it forward. Do that for a second. R to rotate Z. Rotating on the Z axis. And 90. Right. And then GX. So this should all be level, it just won't be level from front to back. So as far as tutorial Chan goes, GY, let's put her about here, the center-ish of the body. Why is it so hard to select this, GY? Let's have this as a working space. Right. Now, this cube. We're going to start at the neck this time around. We'll add a mirror modifier, actually. So we go to the modify properties, the little wrench looking thing or spanner. Add modifier, mirror, and let's hide it for now. So we just turn off this little television screen and make sure this is at zero zero. So let's go into object properties, zero 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 zero, and edit mode. Now we can grab this. By the way, if you want to select all of the points in the scene, just press A, and to deselect, double tap A. Select all with A, G, Z, and we're going to scale it down with F. Scale it down, G, Z, scale it down. Oh, by the way, to rotate like this, um, I'm using my middle mouse click. You'll you'll be able to see all the stuff I'm doing in the bottom left corner. But if you don't know, I'll try to explain it to you. So middle mouse click to rotate, 
and if you want to drag shift middle mouse click you can drag drag stuff around we want to control r add some loop cuts Control R, add some loop cuts. If you don't want to use Control R, we have a little button here. If you can't see it, this is probably collapsed. So just click this little cool, this little arrow in the corner. You just have to click it; it'll pop out. Just hitting A twice, deselect. We have this, the loop cut mesh tool. We can put whatever we want here. Click there, click there, for example, and we can turn the number of, of cuts up. So let's do four, put it on this side, and it'll do four, but on this side it'll do four. All right, Control Z to undo. That's how you do loops with the button. But we don't want to do that, so we'll go back to the box select. And you know what's even better than a box select? A lasso select. So I'm going to hover a mouse over this select box, box button, click hold bring your mouse over to the side and let go over the lasso because lassos are far superior go back to numpad one we can click this z button or if you don't want to click the z button you can just hit numpad seven and it'll do the same thing let's turn on toggle x-ray up here the top right so we can see through the cube Let's get rid of this side, X delete vertices, and then let's go back to modify properties and we'll see what happens when we make it visible again. We get another side that does the exact same thing as this side. Select it, it'll mirror it. Now, with our current setup, if we get the center, a line on the, the Y axis center line, if we grab it and move it, it'll come off. If we turn on mirror up here, enable mesh symmetry in the X axis. By the way, to get these titles up, I'm just hovering my mouse over it. It's like that for a lot of programs. So let's hit X and it'll mirror on the, on the X axis. Mirroring something at zero just does nothing to it in the, in the, uh, left right fashion just on the you know the y plane so let's turn that off let's turn on clipping and you'll see it'll do the same thing because what clipping does is anything on the center it keeps it on the center it joins it up basically so this is one point but if we didn't have it on it'd be two points at the the Y center, or the center of X actually, that would make, no, it's both, the center of X and Y. X makes more sense, logically speaking. Right, forget about, no, don't forget about it. Remember it actually. I'll be testing you on an, on next week's exam. Let's go back to Z and grab this, we're just rounding it out, we want to make a neck. This will do for now. It's going to get far more complicated than this. Scale Z with S and Z. Now let's do a little something. Let's X delete faces. Delete those. And let's do the same here. X delete faces. And pad one. Let's extrude. Let's hit Z. So it goes straight up and down. And let's scale. Oh, actually, let's turn on clipping. GX. So think about this shoulder area. You'll see that the arms are going to come out uh, sideways uh, in a hinge fashion so they go out like this if you see what my mouse is doing actually let's draw the arms come out of this area of the body 
like this. Like this. So I'm going to see if I can represent that with topology. So when it squishes down, this part, which you'll see mostly here, will collapse, it'll get smaller. So let me show you how that might look with topology. This is basically what we did last time, just without all the extra nonsense with the shapes. So I'm going to extrude again, let's just hit Z. Let's go to the top view, scale it up. Grabbing these with G. Probably do. Let's do a control R so we can add some loop cuts. Control R here, 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 and here. This will be for the underarm area. So right here, you'll be able to see it better with the Patreon reference if using that, everyone else. I promise, it's not that difficult to guess. And this area here, first let's make it into a full shape. So we'll click these two points and hit F. These two will be for the arm, scale X. Scale Y, I mean. F to make a face. I'm going to grab this. E to extrude, if I haven't said that already. Oh, let's just bring it all the way down here. We need an area for the crotch, so let's make that into a face with F. She said, stops about here, there, and here. You should still have your your X-ray on, by the way. should be able to grab these as why right now I'm just making the shoulder area now I'm going to run a loop cut with control R down here I don't use the buttons because it's just too slow for me can alt and select Align. So let's Alt and then Shift and Alt Select again. So what I'm doing, if you don't understand what Alt Select means, Alt, click. I'm clicking with my right. You might have to click with your left. Alt with Shift, click. I'm not letting go of Alt at any point. And then now I'm letting go of Alt and just Shift clicking these. All right. Numpad one, G X. This is the underarm. This is just here to round stuff out a bit better. And now this shape, this is slightly different to the tutorial. I'm gonna turn off x-ray so you can see this a bit better. This is a little trick I do to increase the amount of loops, let's call it, without adding 
full loops. This is like a, a half loop. So we have these two quads. We're starting at this side. Oh, by the way, let's see. To get that little knife tool, hitting K, uh, clicking. I'm clicking with my left this time. Left click, left click, and then at the other side. And then when I'm happy with the shape, I press space. This is what we're doing here. Now, K again, these, these lines here, connecting them. K again, these lines here, connecting them. Now we have this round shape of the shoulder beginning to form. Let's turn back on the toggle x-ray. Slightly misaligned, so let's let's do this first. S Z just bringing this down. S X going to G and move this over here. Let's probably do this. Bring these all down. I'm just double tapping G, by the way, to slide these across. Probably fit a different, another loop through that. Now this arm, scale Y with S and Y. Let's bring these in, S, Y. We can select this loop with Alt. Alt and right click. One, numpad one, I mean E to extrude. This is gonna be a little ugly, but we can flatten this out just by R rotating S, X, zero and then rotating it back so let's pause that there now let's get the underarm area we want this to be small say so, say so we have this here and the arm is rotating it rotate like that i i'm sure there's a better way to show us rotation. Let's do 3D cursor here. R. There you go. That's how the arms will move. Um, usually when the arm moves the the shoulder also moves so let's select this. You'll see the arm will move. Let's put the cursor here for example. That's better. <laughs> right, let's do that back to median point, I believe it was at. Ah, what else do we need? We need the legs, so we should have one, two, one, two three. Let's put a cut there and let's bring these up. We have this uh, doing the selection with my left click and then shift to select more. G Z. And I'm assuming. You know what? Let's not assume. Let's do. Let's put another loop through here. Be the quickest body you'll ever make. Uh, the front and back are basically the same. They're basically the same. If I'm doing something at the front, I'm probably going to do it at the back. Now we have this shape. Let's ask Y to round it out a little bit. A leg. Let's E to extrude. 
let's s z s z zero to flatten it completely just looking from a more upwards view g x i can round the shape out s y numpad one Fill that down. I'm just grabbing and putting things in a place that is more applicable. Alright, we can put a loop through here. S Z zero S to scale. X. Let's fix this a little bit because it's a little wiggly. S Y. S Y. S Y. Let's have a separate area for the knee. E. Extrude. Z, let's snap it in the Z, grab it a little bit, E, extrude at the ankles, rotate a little bit, we need the feet, E, extrude again, rotate a little bit, let's go to uh, the top left and click uh, edge select, which is a square with a line through it, we want to make good shape, one, two, three, four, F to make a face, one, two, three, four, F to make a face. Let's turn off x-ray for a moment. Now, these are not clods. One, two, three, four, five. These are n-gons. We don't like n-gons. Let's turn on vertex select so you can see the little dots. Press K for the knife tool and let's turn these into clods. Right. How I like to make feet is extruding them from the front. So let's do that. E. And then grab this GZ. Little wonky feet. Big wonky feet. GX. Let's expand these on the x-axis. S, X. Scale is the right word. Let's scale them. Gladly, because this is super tubified, we won't need to be making feet. S, Y. Zero. You can pass the loops over here if you need them, gladly. Let's leave it for now. Let's get this shape somewhat decent. So SX to scale on the X axis. S X G X. The knee tends to slant in this direction, so let's do that. Not too dramatically. Scale a little bit. That doesn't have to be perfect, especially since we'll be adding the subdivision soon. Scale Z G X. This will do for now. Let's do this view, uh, which is just numpad three. Let's turn on X ray. 
S Y, scale in the Y, G Y. Bring it in the Y direction, G Y. Fix this later down the line, S Y, G Y. S Y. Everything's going to be in the Y because we've already fixed the front view, so there's no point scaling it all around. G Y. S Y S Y G Y S Y Now this is going to be a little bit of a weird area but it'll be fine. I believe in you. You know, let's select this too. G Y think it is suitable to bring this part down for now S -Y -G -Y. we'll sort out the butt later G Y Let's not select that part of the arm. Let's just do this for now. S, Y, G, Y. And the neck, T, Y. There's a lot more detail we can get out of this, but for now, this is a pretty decent shape. At least I think so. And this wrist stuff, super straightforward. Let's actually put a little space for the elbow. Extrude, scale. The thing about um, arms is, as far as references go, very tricky to get this part of the reference. So you just have to wing it. Why? Just try to make something that looks not like a cone from this angle, and take into consideration what the what this what the circles look like from front on. S Y. Look more circular now. These, I believe, can actually come more this way. And so can these. It should help it be a bit more rounder. As why. Right, here's something that we'll be using a lot. Right up here, the proportional editing edit mode. We'll click that and we hit G because we've already got that selected and we can move the whole model. That's not right. Here's what I want you to do. Take a scroll wheel and scroll down. Scroll down. And you'll notice that scrolling down makes this number up here Get large. So let's go the opposite way and see what happens. The brush gets smaller. So when I say scroll down, I mean scroll the brush size down. I believe the correct direction of scrolling with your finger is upwards. If you don't know what the number is, it's right here on the screen. The top left, it says proportional size, smooth, and then it gives a, a, a value. Right now it's at 0 0.1486 meters. Okay, so I'm just going to right click to cancel that. G, Y, and we can scroll that down, bring it forward 
in a smoother fashion. GY. These are gonna need help too. GY. It's making this uh, a more appropriate shape for what it is. This will probably. GY. Right, let's add two loops. Let's do one for now. Can bring this forward. Bring this backwards, because she does need a butt. Let's do something that will help this a bit more. I'm just hitting G now, freehanding it a little bit. Let's well, add another loop. Why not? I'm going to bring these forward, make a kind of dip in the back. And I think now is an appropriate time to get a subdivision modifier. So let's do that. Add modifier, oh, let's uh, escape e uh, edit mode. Going to object mode, let's add a subdivision surface. This one right here. And you know what? I think this is a great time to save. File. Save. Let's save as, actually. Um, whatever you want to call your model. I'm going to call it Tutorial Chan 2022. Save as. And let's not check optimal display, just so when we're in this mode, we can see what it looks like instead of this. I want to see the, uh, the uh, density of quads going on. Because it's a lot. We went from we went from this to this. A lot in a small amount of time. Another thing we should do is let's shade the smooth object. Shade smooth. Nice. And as you can see it's slightly edited what we've just done, but that's nothing that can't be fixed. Oh, let's also do this. We'll click this button on cage, which means that stuff is easier to see. I'm sure this would also help going into this mode. This is called viewport shading. So instead of having to click on cage, but let's keep it on cage for now since it's just easier to look at. SX. GX. Try not to get it to kiss in the middle. We don't need to. We don't need to do that in public. Now, oh, okay. Let's say uh, it's been bad and it wants to kiss anyway. Let's turn off clipping for a moment. Let's unkiss them, and we can turn it back on. But you can also turn this merge down. Let's add another zero. That should uh, allow it not to clip so quickly. Let's add another loop here. Just doing that with Control R. This base for a body is completely fine and understandable, but there are a lot of things you can do to make weight painting easier. And anything that makes weight painting easier is your best friend. There are some things we can add to make joints move better. There are some things we can add to make things look more aesthetically pleasing. And let me uh, show you a little, a little something I made earlier. Welcome to my horde of bodies. This is uh, what happens when you take something simple and you make it more complicated. 
we can start with a body like this. We have this extra line under the knee to aid with movement. We can RX. So when we rotate this, see how that knee still stays pointy. This is just a rough rotation. Let's go back to object mode. Now we have uh, the chest. If we just split open these center points and then we inset the faces, we can start we can start extruding uh, chest stuff. We can also make a line from the top part of the shoulder to here to this part to make a collarbone. We can do similar thing with the, the knees that we did with the chest. We can intrude. Insert, I mean, my bad. We can go even more complicated. This is not as simple as just intruding. This is like splitting stuff, making uh, making them connect and making a whole belly situation. If you see the more shapes you add, the more complicated these things can be. And subdivision is your best friend because we, we come from this all the way to this. With just subdivision, with just subdivision, okay, that's not true. There are some, there are some minor edits of I've, I've, I've done. So uh, here we turn the squares into points because I don't know. They just have more topology, and yes, they are tries. And over here we have some better topology on the butt, so it can look like a butt. If we go to edit mode, we have these lines to sharpen things. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Right now, we're going to cut back on the detail, but if you want to copy any of these, you're more than welcome to copy them. Screenshot, whatever. Oh, another important thing, reducing topology. This thing here, this is a similar shape to what we have on the arm. We go from two points to uh, one, two, three, four points. It will be similar here from uh, two points to one, two, three, four, five. Now it's like three to five. Let's get back to this. Right, we want a collarbone. The collarbone stops. just around here so we're going to try to mimic that somewhat let's try to connect this point if I can select it looks like it's right about here um let's connect it here for now okay let's do a knife for all of these I'm not sure why it's not picking up my clicks there. This didn't cut too great, so let's click that one. Shift, click the other one. M, merge at last. These two will merge together. M, merge at center. Let's sharpen this. I'm shift clicking, shift and E. Should be able to get a better view of this. So this is in a decent place and let's turn on x-ray. We'll grab this. Put, let's turn off proportional editing. There we go. Now we can have a bit of a collarbone situation. That's why we can just dissolve this edge. Just get rid of an edge. X dissolve edges. It's not really doing anything, so makes sense to dissolve it. Let's bring this back. I'm just double tapping G so it'll slide across. Slide across this edge up here. 
all the edge down there. Let's also reduce this area here. And how I'm going to do that is like so. Okay. And let's let's just grab the center of this line with shift. So shift, click on that, click on that, and we're gonna click on. Oh, now I'm not sure if I'm clicking the right place. Is it here? Yep, okay. There we go. I'm just trying to connect these three. This is all a new line. Now we can delete. No, let's not delete. Let's X and dissolve edges. The thing about references, it's very easy to have something that doesn't match. The front and side perfectly. So just do what you can with what you have. As long as it looks good from the front, it should be okay. I'm just grabbing and freehanding stuff, trying to make it look nice. I wonder if it's worth toning that down. Yep, that can go. That can go for now. Right, we have a little collarbone. I'm not going to bother adding a chest. Let's uh, make this back smaller. Let's see if this looks any good. We'll grab that, that, that. X dissolve edges. Yep, that's fine to me. Right, so the front reduces around there, the back reduces around there. GY. Oh, let's still try to keep this dip in the back. Just because it looks better with lighting. I should stop around there. But, 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 but. Right. The but see what I can do about this. I think another loop would be appropriate. So let's start here first. Okay. Should be around here, I believe. Here. Here. Yeah. yeah, right, and then we can grab these, shift E, that will be the underneath of the butt, we just need to get the shapes right, I'm just double tapping G by the way, curve this down, Grabbing G. Oh my. And then let's bring this outwards. GY. Already looking more butty. G sad. Must be careful. You don't want to overdo it. Or maybe you do want to overdo it. Now we want this to, let's bring this closer, Oop. let's do another loop here, we should be able to do this. And then this, hopefully I'm clicking the right thing, yes, okay, so X dissolve edges, hmm, I 
Are you using more topology? Sure. I dissolve edges. So now that curves over. This also dissolve vertices. We don't have to do this thing again. G G G Shift E Oh boy Little butt crack Just because it makes things look uh, nicer. I'm going to need to make sure this is <laughs> a better shape than that. GY. Alright. We're going to try to put the mass in the centre, not the bottom. Not at the bottom of the bottom. Let's just grab these two. GY, GZ. Should help a bit. GZ. Just the guides will help you. Let's turn back on proportional editing. We can also just do connected only. Connected only will be useful. It will mean that regardless of how big this is, it won't affect the arm. It's very easy to affect the arm without connected only on. Bring these forward. The reference is your best friend. L H. I'm hiding it because it's getting in the way. Don't delete it. If it's in the way, just hide it. G Y. Bringing this back. Bringing this back. To those of you that want to know about uh, anatomy, I'll tell you what I did to learn anatomy. Uh, I didn't. I didn't learn anatomy. I just used references. I tried to study anatomy a little bit, but I don't know anything about how. It. References is your best friend. Yes, Susie. Even you. Even you have a friend in references. Let's alt H to unhide. Do you know what? So the flow of topology is somewhat consistent. We're putting another loop there. Might want to bring these forward a little bit. Why? Because why I try to reduce loops is because, well, look how much topology is around the neck. This is just almost inevitable if you make bodies. And this is a low poly ish body, too. So imagine if you had more topology than this. It can get really out of hand really quickly. Okay, where is the belly button? Literally right there. Cube. Edit mode. See how straightforward I can make this. Okay. R G Y only for space for shape I mean G Z can probably smooth this out soon G Y
we have this shape. Let's bring this down. Bring this to match that. Oh, actually, this might be useful too. Now for the belly button. V's I to insert B so it, you know, starts on the middle line. Part one. S. Wait, no, let's turn off proportional. Bring that up, bring that down. Bring that down. We can insert again. Oops. G S Z Let's rotate on the X axis, so R X. Rotate on the X axis and bring this inwards. G Y. This is definitely not the most complex belly. But it is one. Definitely a belly. If you wanted to add a chest, for example, and I said I wasn't too sure about whether I wanted to do this or not, we would have to add a few more loops first. We'd need one for the underside of the chest, one for the middle part, and then we'd have to split this area. Ah, uh, is this right? This one too? So if we turn off clipping for a moment, G, turn it back on, E to extrude, then click those two, merge at last, click these two, merge at last. Yeah, so now we have a somewhat uh, underside of the rib area. And then, um, now I'm here, might as well just do this. So, select face. We want these. These are the ones we want. Yes. I to insert. And then G, Y to bring them outwards. This is definitely not necessary and it does just add more topology. Ah, but heck it, let's keep it. Honestly, you could have stopped editing the body a while ago. Let's check out sculpting. We'll go to smooth. Sculpting is just this tab up here. Let's go to smooth. Oh dear, that's very strong. Let's not have it that strong. Remember to save, by the way. Let's put it down to point 0.1 something. Okay, that's a lot more handleable. I'm just going, oh, you know what we don't have? Let's turn that off. I'm just going around moving some stuff out I might I might just get rid of that chest because it, it is really just adding topology for no good reason we'll do the inflate Ooh. let's do the smooth again smooth oh inflate Let's turn that strength down too. 1.3. I mean 0.13. Right, 
Right, I'm getting rid of the chest because it's just, it's not doing much. Let's dissolve these. You can keep it if you want, X dissolve edges, especially if you have uh, like a larger chested model. Let's do this. Dissolve edges, K. Okay. Bring that over, K. Okay. Bring this over. This is as complicated as it's gonna get. But I do want to make use of this extra topology. Let's bring this back a little bit and bring this forward a little bit. And definitely try not to overdo it too much. Keep it within the, uh oh. Keep it within the reference area. Might turn that on again. Bring this back. Bring this forward. Control R. Control R again. Y, let's double tap G, bring this up. Oh, no. Double tap G, bring this down. That won't slide very easily. When you want to slide down, alright. Let's merge some of these. Um, center. Um, it's center. Sure. Sure. This will be good for me. Yes, we have another triangle. can also do this. GY. Uh, scale it. Is it necessary though? For now we'll drag these up and drag this down and give that excuse why to keep it. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll accept this. The knees, the knees. This area here and this area here, I insert. Bring it down a little bit. Don't bring it too, too much to the side because otherwise it's going to bend at a weird angle. Be the knees. Let's bring this out a little bit. Referencing the side view, of course. Bring these like so. I want to bring these down and these up. I'm just double tapping G to slide it across. G, G. And let's add another loop here around the foot. S Z could also put one here. Right, let's smooth these feet up and call it a day. Auto save is okay, but honestly, I'd put more trust in a rock to feed me food than I would autosave to save my blender files. I think the last time I lost some work, apparently blender had saved the last two minutes 
which was very much untrue because it took me at least 20 to get back to the spot I was. And you know what? Proportional editing. Anything to make things easier. Just smoothly dragging things. If you want to see stuff without all the Blender um, UI in the way, just click this button here. Show overlays. You can see how things look. And you can edit stuff as well, it's just a little hard to see where you're clicking. You know, at this point it might be, it might be useful not to 100% rely on the ref. this looks better from this view. This looks better to me. I don't know about you. The arms do look a little sad though. Let's see what we can do about them. Yeah, they are a little sad. Let's get in the Y axis. Let's get in the Y. You can also just look down it. Look down the y-axis. The y-axis? Look down the arm, see if it looks... Half decent or not. This is probably fine. And this actually... Oh, not that. This does make the shape look a lot nicer. Do I like this? I don't think I do. G... GX... That's a lot nicer. We are family! I got one big spider, you see? Stuff is looking decently good. Oh, I know what we need to do. Right. See all this... Model... We can make it look cleaner. Now we've we've done this with Shift E, this uh, creasing. We can see in the item menu. Is it an item? Yeah, we can we can make the crease zero or one. Let's put it to zero. Shift E. We can drag. Another thing I like doing with this crease is sharpening it. We can have some better shapes. Control E and mark sharp. Control E, mark sharp. And it's not working. I believe there's a few ways to fix that. The one that I'm very good at is this. Just selecting all mesh, normals, reset vectors. And then control E, clear sharp, mesh, normals, average, face area. Let's try this again. Two, three, four. Mark sharp. I think this is working now. Mark sharp. This is just nice for lighting and such. Let's see if it's worth marking this sharp. Oh, oh no. Wrong button. Mark sharp. That's yeah, alright. Let's see if this one is worth it. Mark sharp. Uh, it does help with the lighting to do that. Let's do this. G Y. G Y. The, the other thing you'd be marking sharp is the, uh, the underneath of the chest, just like the bottom few. We don't have the chest, so we don't need to do that. 
But if you have one, I think it helps. I think it helps with how things look. It's not a bit sharp. This is a lot cleaner looking and the lighting looks a lot nicer. Body. Body. This is fine. It could be worse. As far as as far as um poly count goes. Let's go to object mode. Let's see here. Go click on this little arrow drop down menu. We can click on statistics see what we're working with here almost 4k tries not brilliant but definitely not terrible i like to try to stay under 100k there are some complicated models that can really use the extra topology for visual aspects alone, not for practicality. Because as far as this model goes, even though it's going to look really ugly when I do this, um, when it's done properly, when it's done properly, it'll move fine. It'll move fine, as long as everything's in the right area. This will be fine. <laughs> Just, you know, not that ugly. But we like subdivision, so we're gonna take advantage of it. I'm wondering if the knees could use more love or not. I feel like they could. That was a lot of information in a short amount of time. I hope you managed to keep up. Remember, at any point, you can make things easier for yourself by not adding certain details. There are things that are very useful, like elbow joints and knees, but belly buttons? They're not necessary. And uh, for those of you that are making chests, then you don't have to do it the exact same way that I did. You could have done it the other way that I showed earlier. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section. Don't tweet me questions. Don't DM me questions. The whole point of the comment section is that if I'm not here to help, you can help each other, which is a billion times more useful. Right, if you want to catch me live modeling or um, playing games or summoning demons or sacrifices or something catch me on twitch.tv uh, slash brain hat you can also follow updates on twitter join the discord and uh make sure to subscribe otherwise i'll kiss your mom this series is brought to you by my patrons with special thanks to my grey clouds and grey skies eel hee haw pixel pagos so at and spud the cat See you in the next class. Farewell.